SpaceX just fired all 33 Raptor engines on Booster B-15, generating over 7,000 tons of thrust in a flawless eight-second test. But here's what's really happening. This reused booster marks the end of an era at Pad 1, while secretly setting up SpaceX's most ambitious transition yet. Can Flight 11 actually launch this month? Let's dive into the timeline and what this means for Starship's future. When SpaceX ignited all 33 Raptor engines on Booster B-15, they weren't just conducting another routine test. They were proving something that fundamentally challenges everything we thought we knew about rocket reusability. This reused booster, previously damaged on Flight 8 with middle ring engine failures during boost back and landing burns, just delivered a flawless eight-second burn, generating over 7,000 tons of thrust. To put that in perspective, Imagine taking a Formula One car that crashed at Monaco, rebuilding it in record time, and immediately winning the next Grand Prix. Except this car weighs 3,400 tons and produces more thrust than 20 Boeing 747s at takeoff. The timeline alone defies every conventional aerospace wisdom established over six decades of spaceflight. Just 11 days after Flight 10's spectacular success, B-15 was transported from the production facility, lifted onto the orbital launch mount on September 6th, and test-fired without a single hiccup. For context, traditional aerospace companies typically require 6 to 12 months between launches using completely new hardware. SpaceX just demonstrated an 11-day turnaround with previously flown, previously damaged equipment. The technical execution was nothing short of surgical precision. More than 350,000 gallons of water cascaded across the flame trench as the detonation suppression system activated. Frost bands appeared on the tank walls like frozen fingerprints. Liquid oxygen filled the tanks completely, while methane reached exactly one-third capacity, the precise fuel loading profile required for static fire testing. Every parameter hit its target with Swiss watch accuracy. But here's what few people realize about those problematic middle ring engines that failed during Flight 8's boost back and landing sequence. SpaceX engineers didn't just fix them. They completely validated that even hardware with documented failure history can be rapidly refurbished for mission critical operations. It's like performing open heart surgery on a marathon runner who never stops running. The engineering team had to identify failure modes, redesign components, test solutions, and validate performance, all while maintaining an impossible schedule that would break most aerospace organizations. The post-test sequence revealed operations executed with clockwork precision. Chopsticks lowered smoothly into position, the ship quick disconnect arm reattached without issues, and all support equipment, including the transport stand and Raptor work platform, returned to the pad for detailed inspection. No anomalies reported, no delays encountered, no surprises discovered. This isn't just technical achievement. It's industrial transformation disguised as routine testing. And here's what's truly remarkable. While everyone celebrates the successful test, they're missing the deeper story. This perfect performance masks a transition so significant it will reshape not just SpaceX, but the entire global space industry. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how this flawless test conceals the end of an entire era. This perfect static fire test masks something most observers are missing entirely. B-15 is very likely the last version 1 booster that will ever fly to space. While media outlets focus on test success metrics and launch predictions, SpaceX is quietly orchestrating the most ambitious infrastructure transition in aerospace history. A transformation that will make today's achievements look like prototype demonstrations. Starting with the mission immediately following Flight 11, both Super Heavy and Starship are expected to transition to the revolutionary V3 design architecture. This isn't incremental improvement or evolutionary development. It's complete technological reimagining. Think of it as the difference between a steam locomotive and a bullet train. They both transport people, but the underlying engineering represents entirely different centuries of innovation. The current Pad 1 infrastructure featuring its six-legged orbital launch mount and innovative water-cooled steel plate system, simply cannot handle the operational demands of V3 hardware. These systems were remarkable engineering achievements for their time, 
proving that rapid iteration could create functional launch infrastructure faster than traditional development cycles. But they were always intended as stepping stones rather than permanent solutions, prototypes that enabled learning while building towards something far more capable. Consider the competitive landscape context. While Blue Origin continues struggling with consistent New Shepard operations, and Amazon's Project Kuiper remains largely theoretical, SpaceX is preparing to retire entire generations of proven, flight-tested hardware because they've literally outgrown their own technological capabilities. The company launched over 2,000 Starlink satellites in 2025 alone, pushing their active constellation above 8,300 operational satellites, creating the largest artificial satellite network in human history. But the numbers tell an even more remarkable story. SpaceX has achieved over 500 orbital class launches and landings, with individual boosters like B1069 completing 27 successful missions. Each reuse of hardware like B-15 saves approximately $50 to $70 million in manufacturing costs, while proving that rapid turnaround operations are not exceptional achievements, but routine industrial processes. This economic model positions SpaceX to dominate not just the launch services market, but the entire space logistics and transportation industry for the next several decades. Meanwhile, Pad 2 at Starbase approaches completion with cutting-edge flame trench systems and infrastructure designed specifically for V3 operations. Kennedy Space Center's historic LC-39A undergoes extensive Starship modifications. Plans advance for additional facilities at Cape Canaveral's SLC-37. SpaceX isn't just scaling existing operations, they're constructing the foundational infrastructure for a genuine space-based economy. The implications extend beyond SpaceX's corporate success. Traditional aerospace contractors are being forced to completely rethink their business models. European space agencies are questioning fundamental assumptions about launch frequency and cost structures. Even emerging space powers like China and India are accelerating their own reusability programs in response to SpaceX's demonstrated capabilities. Flight 11 represents the culmination of everything Pad 1 was designed to achieve, while simultaneously marking its transition into obsolescence. It's like watching the final steam locomotive pull into the station just as electric trains begin service. Progress demands evolution, even when current systems work perfectly. And here's why this changes everything about humanity's relationship with space. The successful B-15 static fire test isn't really about Flight 11. It's the final validation needed before SpaceX transforms from a launch service provider into something entirely unprecedented in human history, a space transportation utility operating at industrial scale. Consider what happens when Pad 1 completes its comprehensive upgrades by late next year, joining Pad 2 and the expanding Florida facilities in a coordinated network of Starship operations across multiple launch sites. We're looking at the realistic possibility of weekly Starship launches within 18 months. Not monthly launches, not bi-weekly operations. Weekly launches of the most powerful rocket system ever successfully flown. To understand the magnitude of this transformation, consider that the entire global launch industry currently manages approximately 100 to 150 launches per year across all providers, all vehicle types, all nations combined. SpaceX is preparing infrastructure for 50-plus Starship launches annually from their facilities alone. The cascading implications touch every aspect of human space activities and terrestrial industries. NASA's Artemis Lunar Program depends entirely on Starship for surface operations, crew transportation, and cargo delivery. Mars colonization transitions from distant aspiration to economically feasible reality. When launch costs drop from current rates of $10,000 plus per kilogram to projected rates under $100 per kilogram. Satellite constellation deployment, orbital manufacturing, asteroid resource extraction, space-based solar power generation, entire industries that exist only in science fiction today become routine commercial activities with predictable cost structures. But here's the critical detail most analysis overlooks. The biggest remaining challenges aren't technological anymore. Florida's comprehensive environmental impact assessments reveal the true bottlenecks ahead. 
Popular recreational areas like Playa Linda Beach could face over 60 closure days annually. Commercial aviation across Florida's busy airspace might experience delays ranging from 40 minutes to two hours during extended launch windows. Maritime operations at Port Canaveral require temporary navigation restrictions that affect one of America's busiest cruise ship terminals. Local community voices highlight the complexity of this transformation. Tampa International Airport's Chief Operating Officer, John Tillicos, emphasized risk to Florida's $152 billion annual tourism industry, warning that Starship operations could create significant impact to commercial aviation and the traveling public. Health experts like neuroscience graduate student Robin Memphis raise concerns about chronic sleep disruption from sonic booms, linking launch noise to increased risks of depression, anxiety, cardiovascular disease, and suicide, particularly concerning given Florida's large populations of veterans and trauma survivors. Even unexpected stakeholder groups are voicing opposition. The American Association for Nude Recreation argues that frequent beach closures interfere with members' legal rights and the substantial tourism revenue generated by clothing optional recreational areas. These concerns aren't trivial. They represent legitimate quality of life issues affecting millions of Florida residents and visitors. Yet momentum appears unstoppable despite these challenges. NASA, Department of Defense agencies, and major institutions recognize Starship's critical role in maintaining American spaceflight leadership against growing international competition. The economic benefits of space industry expansion, estimated in hundreds of billions of dollars over the next decade, create powerful political and business incentives for resolution of local concerns through mitigation strategies rather than program cancellation. International competitive pressures add urgency to these decisions. China's rapid advancement in space capabilities, including their own heavy lift rocket development and lunar exploration programs, creates national security imperatives that override local opposition. Europe's struggling Ariane program and Russia's declining space capabilities leave SpaceX as the Western world's primary path to space dominance. The path forward demands unprecedented coordination between SpaceX, federal regulatory agencies, state governments, and local communities. Success requires innovative solutions, advanced noise mitigation technologies, optimized flight paths that minimize disruption, economic compensation programs for affected businesses, and transparent communication about long-term benefits versus short-term inconveniences. If SpaceX maintains their demonstrated pace, and the B-15 static fire suggests they can, Flight 11 could launch as early as September 29th, which is my personal prediction based on their proven 11-day turnaround capability. Success would mark the second reused booster mission in Starship history and potentially the final flight from Pad 1 before its transformation into a V3-capable facility. Within five years, we might look back at this moment as the precise inflection point when humanity transitioned from being occasional visitors to space to becoming a genuinely spacefaring civilization with routine, affordable access to the cosmos. The revolution isn't coming tomorrow. It's happening right now, disguised as another successful static fire test on a sunny September morning in Texas. In uh, this is exactly why SpaceX chose to push B-15 through such an aggressive timeline. They're not just testing a booster. They're proving that space access can become as routine as commercial aviation. What this means is that we're witnessing the final validation of technologies that will make weekly Starship launches reality within 18 months. The successful static fire connects directly to humanity's biggest goals, establishing permanent lunar bases, reaching Mars, and creating a true space economy. When launch costs drop from $10,000 to under $100 per kilogram, we transform from space visitors into space inhabitants. This positions America decades ahead in the new space race, while competitors are still struggling with basic reusability. And this is just the beginning. Flight 11 launches potentially on September 29th, marking Pad 1's final mission before its transformation. Pad 2 activates by year's end. Florida operations expand throughout 2026. We're watching the assembly of humanity's first interplanetary transportation network in real time. How do you think weekly Starship launches will change life on Earth? Will the benefits outweigh the disruptions we discussed? Share your predictions in the comments. I read every single one. 
This is Space Hub, where we dive deep into the engineering breakthroughs reshaping our future. If you want more analysis like this, hit subscribe and the notification bell. For the latest space developments that matter, you know where to find us. The age of routine space access isn't coming. It's here, one static fire test at a time.